Okay, let's move on and introduce the sum and difference rules for finding derivatives. This is going to allow us to start doing some more complicated kind of questions. Let's say we have the sum of two different functions and we want to take the derivative of that. How do you think we're going to do that? Well, your intuition might suggest that to do the derivative of this sum, all you should do is, a do the, is to do the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. And that actually turns out to be correct, okay? Really, it requires a proof to justify that, but this is the rule. And we'll prove that, we'll prove this result in a little bit of a, a later video. But for now, it's, uh, you're allowed just to accept it, that it's true and use it. Similarly, if you have two functions that are being subtracted, you can find the derivative just by doing the derivative of the first minus the derivative of the second, okay? So these are the two rules here that I want to introduce in this video. Let's, uh, let's do some examples. How about if we have something like this, x cubed plus x to the 7, okay? How do we do the derivative of this sum? Well, according to this rule right here, we should do the derivative of the first one plus the derivative of the second. And that's 3x squared plus 7x to the 6. The way I got that is, of course, I used the power rule two times here, 1 with n being 3. So the 3 comes to the front, and I do 3 minus 1 is 2. Then I use the power rule again with n being 7. The 7 comes to the front, and 7 minus 1 is 6. What happens if I had something like um, x plus square root x? Well, according to this rule, it's the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. Now, these are two that I've asked you to memorize. Remember, the derivative of x is just 1. And the derivative of root x is 1 over 2 root x. You see, the thing is, if you didn't memorize that, what would happen? Well, I guess you would have to do something like this. You'd write x to the 1. And you'd rewrite this as x to the half. Then you would do 1x to the 1 minus 1. You would do 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half. And then you'd say, well, this is really 1 times 1, which is 1. And then you'd bring that to the bottom. And then you'd rewrite it with a root sign. And you would get the same answer as, as I did over here. But you really want to go through all these steps all the time? Isn't it much easier just to memorize that? So it's up to you, but I really suggest to, uh, to memorize that. I, I find it saves a lot of time. So uh, what about an example with a difference? Let's say we have something like, uh, I don't know. Well, let, let's do this. Let's do something like 3 x to the 10 minus 5 x to the negative 4, let's say. Here, this is where derivatives, you know, start to get a little more complicated because we're going to be combining several rules. The first rule we're going to use is this difference rule, okay? So it's going to be the derivative of the first, subtract the derivative of the second term, now, how do I do these derivatives? Well, remember that previous video where we have a number in front? We can pull that um, to the front here and then do the derivative of x to the 10 kind of separately, right? And that's, that's uh, that step. And then we use our power rule. So this is 3. The derivative of x to the 10 is 10x to the 9 minus 5. And what do we do here? Well, let's bring the minus 4 to the front. It's power rule again. x to the power of negative 4 minus 1, negative 5. And notice there's no more prime symbols, so that means we've done the derivative. The only thing we have to do now is to uh, maybe simplify it a little bit. 3 times 10 is 30. Um, 
minus 5 times minus 4 is positive 20. We can leave it like that, or maybe just do one more step and rewrite it with a positive exponent only. This first term is fine. It has x to the 9 is positive. Plus, this is going to be 20 over x to the 5. And that would be our final answer there. So you can see how these rules are quite simple. If we have, uh, you know, two terms being added or subtracted, we just do the derivatives individually, term by term, right? Now, even though I only have two functions here, it's also true if you have more than two functions, okay? Let's do a little example of that, just so you see what I mean. Like, what if we have something like x to the one-third minus, um, I don't know, x to the minus one plus... 3x minus 7. Okay? Let's see if we can find this derivative. Well, this is just adding and subtracting, right? So, using those rules in combination together, this derivative is just we're going to do the derivative of the first one minus the derivative of the second plus the derivative of this one minus the derivative of this. And now, what can we do? Well, the derivative of this, we can do that right now. It's uh, 1 third x to the 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. And here, what do we have? Let's use brackets just because uh, there's a lot of negative signs and we don't want to make a mistake. Well, n is negative 1, and we're going to use the power rule. So negative 1 x to the negative 1 minus 1 which is negative 2. Now how about this? Well, remember that little rule that when you have a number in front of a function and, and you want to find the derivative, all you do is pull that number to the front and then do the derivative of it like that. And remember that rule we did at the very beginning, the derivative of a number is 0, right? So that's easy. We're still not quite done because we still have a derivative here, right? But that's easy. The der derivative of x is 1, right? So let's clean this up a little bit. Let's write this as an, with positive exponents. So 3 over x to the 2 thirds. Minus of minus 1 is plus 1. I don't have to write the 1 anymore. I don't have to, yeah. And this x to the minus 2, let's write it as 1 over x to the positive 2. <laughs> and this is 3 times 1. <coughs> and minus 0 it doesn't even matter, right? And 3 times 1 is just 3, right? So I'll just, instead of rewriting it, I'll just write that. And there's our answer, okay? So even if um, you have more, that you can have as many functions as you want, as long as they're all separated by plus and minus signs. To find the derivative of that long expression, you just do the derivative term by term and apply each rule um, individually to each term, okay? So that's the sum and difference rules for derivatives. It's pretty easy. <coughs> that's all I really wanted to cover in this video.